What's up guys, Goody here, back with another Jujutsu Kaisen manga chapter review. We're finally back from break and chapter 181 is absolutely fire. It marks the four year anniversary of the series being published and it's low key based around this idea. We see Kenji Hikari meet an absolute weeb that writes manga about cat girls. Yes, you heard me right, cat girls in Jujutsu Kaisen. He's pulling his cock out! And we also wrap up Yuta's part of the culling game here for the time being. Remember to smash that like button and subscribe for more and now let's get into it. So to start things off, let's talk about where we left off two weeks ago with chapter 180. We saw Yuta absolutely destroy Ryu Ishiguri once and for all. He fulfilled the man's weird wishes to be full during a fight. And Ryu basically says that he can die, once again, happy. That was pretty much all that happened last time, so here we pick up in this week's chapter. Ryu gives Yuta a talk no jutsu explaining that Yuta sparing his life would eventually lead to his downfall. Not because Ryu would have it out for him or anything, but because being kind and sparing those who would fight him to the death will eventually lead to his demise. He claims that only those who are strong and have a completely overwhelming sense of self-righteousness and disregard for others will truly be powerful and escape defeat. We get a glimpse of Sukuna in a panel here, showing him as an example of such a being. Ryu says that Yuta is too sweet and that is not a compliment. Yuta says that Uro told him the same thing, so this confirms that Yuta spared both of their lives, much to my surprise. Ryu was just as surprised as I was that Uro was still alive, but he says it makes sense since he was the one to blast her and knock her out, and his blast wasn't too strong right after their domain expansion battle. Ryu schools Yuta in a wholesome moment here, saying that he should pay attention to Uro since it was like they were having a lover's quarrel. Yuta explains that nothing he says matters to her, and it always ends in an argument because he was quote unquote blessed, and she wasn't. And this is a facet of her character that we explained several weeks ago, check out the link video at the top for more. Now, Ryu really doesn't get it, but he agrees to give Yuta the points he accumulated. Yuta says that Ryu should thank his friends for adding the point transfer rule to the culling game because without it, he might have killed him and Uru. Yuta now has 200 points in the game. Now, you will never guess who makes a random appearance in a panel here. Useless Miwa herself. Now, there's absolutely no context here, but it seems to imply that Miwa has entered the culling game and may approach Yuta soon. Let me know down below in the comments what you think her motives are, because I have no idea. Now, we finally swap over to Tokyo Colony number 2, where the man himself, Kenji Hikari, has gone for the culling game. We see the office of Shuisha, the publisher of Shonen Jump magazine in which Jujutsu Kaisen is published, and we can see that this is a definite easter egg in reference to this chapter celebrating the 4 year anniversary of its serialization. Now, on the first panel of the chapter we were teased that a foreign kid named Charles Bernard came into the Shuisha office to submit a manga. We flash forward here to his interview with Shuisha, in which he's dodging questions like, do you have serialization experience, and have you been published? He speaks Japanese very well for a foreign kid and we learn that he and his parents are actually French, but he was born and raised in Japan. We can already tell that he will be kind of a gag character. He's over the top and flashy and this is illustrated by the way he's sitting during his interview. He says to the interviewer that he speaks Japanese well and the interviewer really doesn't know how to respond. I mean the man is literally Japanese, what do you expect bro? The interviewer calls him weird and continues. Charles claims that once he reads his manga, Shuisha is sure to sign him to a long and healthy relationship. Now we see a page of the manga that he's presenting to the interviewer. It's a story based on an old tale called Ikusan and the Tiger, if you're interested in checking that out, except that there is a whole cat girl on the panel. Yes, there are officially cat girls in Jujutsu Kaisen, you heard it here first folks. The interviewer is dumbfounded by this manga proposal, and he says that while manga based on old folk tales is not a bad thing, this manga is a little bit too adult oriented for a shonen magazine. Charles explains the manga in depth saying that the main character gets pranked every night and deals with problems like how to catch a tiger in a screen, which is the exact storyline of Ikusan and the tiger, except he changed the tiger to a cat girl. The interview goes on criticizing the manga claiming that it's hard to understand and mixes way too many genres for a good manga. Charles finally gets set off when the interviewer says that the artwork is inadequate and unrealistic, claiming that fingers don't bend in the way that Charles drew them. Charles breaks the interviewer's finger to make it appear like the one he drew in the manga, and then he says to go watch live action movies if realism matters that much to him. He throws a temper tantrum going on about the boldness and fever that his drawings offer and he storms out of Shuisha. He then meets Hikari who we have not seen in forever 
and he asks him philosophical questions like what is a manga and what is a mangaka while riding a ferris wheel with him. It is so random to see this fearsome underground fighting club owner riding a ferris wheel with a failing French manga artist that I don't even know where to start. I love Gege in this series so much. Anyway, they talk about how lucky it is that the power is still working despite the culling game going on. And Akari says that he doesn't feel lucky since he's riding a ferris wheel with another guy. Hakari says it's a preview to when one day he brings a woman on the ride and Charles brings the mood down, which we'll learn soon that he's really good at doing by saying that he doesn't think Tokyo will ever recover from the effects of the culling game. Charles monologues here saying that no manga is being produced anymore and he needs a reason to fight in the culling game. He compares the culling game to manga and he says that in the culling game people fight for negative reasons, whereas in manga, the main character has to have a positive reason to fight. Charles wants Hikari to give him a reason to hate him and fight him. Now Hikari says that since Charles is a mangaka, he wouldn't read his manga, even if he begged him to. He doesn't want to catch his gloomy funk. Hikari calls Charles a disgusting otaku, and this is the final straw. Charles starts crying and says, why did you have to say something so awful? I guess it worked. Charles looks ready to fight Hikari to the death, so I guess we'll see that next week. This chapter was absolutely amazing. We saw some more of Yuta, a glimpse of Sukuna and useless Miwa, a cat girl, and Hikari himself. Let me know what you guys thought of the chapter down below. That's all I have for you this time. As always, smash that like button and subscribe for more. Check out the video or playlist linked on screen. And until next time, peace.